So is this the official drinking channel of that show? So we're going to get all of their fan base to subscribe to us? We wouldn't want that because there's like millions. Millions upon millions. Mm -hmm. So somehow you need to email your boyfriend, the whichever actor it is, and promote this <laughs> and that we could be the official. Sorry. He has a brewery in outside of Austin. When they're done filming, we can go there and you can give him your card. And say, hey, come up and... We can record an episode But I, there. I need the one to come talk to him because I need to feign like I don't actually know who he is because I don't. Because you then probably he... probably would recognize him. But then he won't think I'm some sort of psycho fan. Like me? Fair enough. Like you? you I will just invite him up to the home bar and I'll show him pictures of it and say, hey, what's, let's review your beer. Come up, bring it up, and we can try some whiskey. And I'll bring him to the psycho fans. <laughs> and then... He can also bring Hilly and Hannah <laughs> with them. I don't know these people. I almost need little, little stickers on here to know where to put the glasses. It just looks off. I can't see it because the camera's in the way, so now I can't even fidget with them anymore. The camera's, the camera's like three feet below the TV. Oh, I can't. Sorry. <laughs> Why did you just mess with everything? <laughs> Stop. Because I can't see and I'm fidgeting. Stop. When you're two, 20 feet closer <laughs> to the camera than you, it's kind of... <laughs> There's two barrels here, and we just cut it in half. He's green screened in. <laughs> the magic mm -hmm. of Hollywood. Cheers! Did you do the snap? The magic snap? No. Did you do the snap? Like an hour ago. Cheers! Yeah. Welcome, yeah. welcome! No. no. Here, I'll just. I'm going to do it now because you missed. Take two. No, it didn't. <laughs> but take 300. 312. I might actually leave that one in. <laughs> Cheers. Welcome, welcome. How are you today? The bourbon and booze 101. Bourbon and booze 101. Hey, it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome back. We are going to look at a Low priced, but somewhat difficult to find scotch. Um, it's a Speyside single malt, Glen Parker. Uh, it's hard to find. It's not available at a lot of liquor stores, especially the big chains. Um, I found it at a, the local liquor store. Um, and it was inexpensive enough, I wanted to pick it up. The local local or yeah. the local one. And what I think is unique really about Glen Parker is it's actually a lowland. It says Speyside on it, but it's it's distilled in Glasgow and it's got there's no peat, there's no Glasgow's not a No, Glasgow is is the cold. edge of the highlands and lowlands and most of the distilleries in Glasgow is are lowlands and there's not very many almost all scotches are north of that glasgow edinburgh lane so we're talking about islays and and space sides and the highlands um so very few what would be considered lowlands so i was really confused because i was doing the research this is glasgow distilled but it says space side single malt and i've been researching um space side quite a bit because my wife and i are going to go hiking um down the Speyside River and visit 30 or 40 distilleries next year. And this didn't pop up, so I'm not really sure um, about this. So if you guys are in Scotland, you know more about Glen Parker. If it's available in your liquor store, let us know because it's very difficult to find and I can't really find too much information on the internet. Um, it is a screw top, which is nice because it hasn't, um, been fixated by the cork craze of the 1980s, 90s, and stuff. It's 21.88, so this puts it at a very 
Shallow 3. It's 80 proof and it's a 12 year age, so pretty decent. Um, I've actually opened it and tried it and wasn't, wasn't disappointed. So let's go ahead and give this a go. Uh, we will. Is that enough for you? Mm -hmm. You always complain that I don't give you enough. So did you get some? Okay, I was just wondering. Um, so, uh, as we review this, we'll put down the information in the middle and let's give it a go. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Ready? I'm ready. I'm always ready. <laughs> hmm. Just FYI, we have these cards with all of our, you can't really see. Um, that's what's shown down the middle. But you can print this off yourself on bourbonandbooze.com. Again, I see the icky face. <laughs> well, Alex isn't a big... Yeah. Alex isn't a big Scotch fan. Even when she doesn't like it, she's like, Need a little spittoon? Are you just spinning the chair? You know what? So you can say, no, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. No copyright intended. No, Mr. Cody's over there, sitting in the chair, drinking um, his With Mr. Parker, Bigglesworth. He's got this big old dog in his lap, and he's just petting him. <laughs> have to do the famous Maggie. <laughs> yeah, so she doesn't keep barking, but she's about ready to. Apparently she's if I was satisfied a, with attention today. I'm going to change this. Not going to change the overall rating, but I decided to make a slight adjustment. Okay, so Glenn Parker 2188 um, from Glasgow. They call it a space side. It's a three barrel on price. I give it a 3.5 on a room. I think it's got a really nice aroma it's got a little bit of a malty woody i don't get any vanillas or caramels or uh dark fruit but a little woody kind of uh on the aroma on the aroma i give it a 3.5 because there's not a lot of um alcohol tinge to it it's not unpleasant um it's kind of average but Give it a little bit of a boost there. And you gave it a three. I gave it a 3.5. Oh, you gave it a 3.5. I gave I was gonna give it a three, but I gave it the extra 0.5 because of the price. It's a cheaper and it smells pretty good for a okay. inexpensive. Flavor, I gave it a three. I just think it's got an average flavor. It's not very overwhelmingly um, Flavorful, you can't really get a lot of the different notes, um, flavor notes. It's not really impressive on the front or the end. So let's give it an average three. I gave it a 3.5, and I think I gave it the 0.5 because for the price it's. Okay, so you're trying to just give it a little boost because of that price. Which yeah, isn't the, going the flavor, but I, I can see that. Yeah, because it is. This is a nice everyday. I just need a simple scotch. You could do that. I originally gave it a three on bite, and I downgraded it to two because there is something funky on the back end. Every time, once it lingers, and once you get that, there's this aftertaste. There's this funk that I don't like. It's almost a metallic. I'm not really getting that. That's well, maybe me. now that you mention it. <laughs> it's like in the heavy after. Not yeah. 
the heavy after. So I downgraded two. That gives me 11.5. Still going to be a three barrel. You've rounded it off with a three on bite average. Um, so that gave you 13, still a three barrel. So this is a three barrel rating. So even though we're off by a point and a half, it's still going to average out to that three barrel. Um, but I don't know. Uh, for the price, if you want to try scotch, might be a good entry point. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's much better out there to try as entry points into the scotch world. Um, probably my preferred would be um, Monkey Shoulder or a Glen Levitt. Um, not, not anything too peaty. Um, but for the price, I mean, that was quite a bit more expensive than this. I would, yeah, this would be fine. What say you? It's good. I might buy it at the local. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Um, Alex gave it the crumply face and didn't care for it. And Cody, and Cody gave, gave it. the I'm too tired. What? He gave it. <laughs> he gave it two. I'm too tired. <laughs> a two. I'm too tired. All right. Tell us what you think about uh, Glen Park. If you've tried it, um, I think it's worth for the price. Twenty one bucks. Twenty bucks. Pick it up. Give it a try. Um, use it for. Um, Friends who just want to try scotch and you don't want to give them your compass box or your Ardberg or Oban or anything, just give them that so you don't waste the good stuff. But um, that's, that's decent. So make sure to hit the like and subscribe. Check out YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. merch and Twitter and Instagram, Instagram all of that stuff. All that. And anything else? There's no bad whiskey. Anything before that? I don't know. I don't know. So, um, there's no bad whiskey. There's only good whiskey and great whiskey. And this is this is good whiskey. So, cheers. Cheers. Later. I'm going to have to do more research because I might want to hunt this place out and get more info on it. Okay. So, the question is, you're a Bond villain. Who's your... What's your henchman's name? My henchman? Yeah. Mr. Bigglesworth? Your bonds. <laughs> my, my bonds? Because um, random task was Blowfield and. Yeah. No, and um, odd job was. Hey, you put me on the spot. I want to say stuff that's probably from Austin Powers and not appropriate for a channel, but. <laughs> You're. Henchman. The K-War. <laughs> my, my henchman is Cheese Quaker. Oh, so we're making stuff up. I said you wanted real henchmen. No. So I'm trying to think of people like Odd Job or um, all the different people. But oh, Cheese Quaker, huh? Okay, the spleen. <laughs> the spleen. That's just Cheers. a horrible <laughs> Let me introduce you to the cheese grater. Mm -hmm.